Hello and welcome to this short video on Jet Reports. My name is Ben Rogers. I'm a Dynamics 365 Business Central consultant. Um, I also work with Great Plains as well. Um, I'll give you a very quick demonstration today of Jet Reports. The agenda this morning. First of all, I'm going to look at the connections. So Jet does connect to Business Central, Great Plains. It can also connect to the third party systems as well, if applicable. Um, I'm going to build up a very simple trial balance report from scratch just to show the functionality and then how certain reports can be sliced and diced and dynamically refreshed and that kind of thing as well, because it's a very powerful tool in that regard. I'm going to show a couple of static reports just to give an idea of how you can actually create your layouts and then just embed jet formulas in as well. And also just a quick mention of the scheduler where you can schedule reports in JET and also the JET Hub, which is a central repository. You can upload your reports into a web function and users can access and run reports from the web as well. So we'll go straight into Excel. And first thing I'm going to do is just point out, as you can see, I've got a few connections here. So I'm connected to my Business Central database. I've also got a connection to our ABS internal GP system as well. And I've also got a local connection to my local GP system too. So you can have multiple connections. And if you're in a situation where you're thinking about maybe migrating from Great Plains to Business Central, JET will fully support creating reports from both systems. You could have a report looking at historical information from an archived GP system and also your live data from Business Central. So it will support both and you can amalgamate and create some quite nice reporting functions using multiple links. So here's my menu. I've got plenty of options here, but I'm just going to focus on a few of the key ones. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into my browser. Now, when I open my browser up, I'll get a list of all of my tables and there's a favorite function in JET. So I've highlighted the star. So these are my favorites. So if ever I click off that star, I then get every other table available and there are a lot. So over time, you will get to know which tables you'll use more than most and you can favorite them. So you can just come in access them directly you don't have to trawl through and search for all the things that you need to get to so if i click on my gl account over on the right i've got all the fields available and there are multiple fields again you can favorite certain fields if you're going to use them and other ones you can ignore that you might not use as much but it's basically a drag and drop using the browser function so what i'm going to do is just drag over my account number first and i'm going to place that round about there and there's a reason that I'm going to leave a few gaps as you can see straight away it's put a formula at the top auto plus hide plus values so what that's going to do is when I run my report it's going to it's going to hide certain things uh, rows columns and that's where some of the functionality comes in so we can see it's dumped some information in there and you'll see it's put a formula in it knows I want to generate some rows because I've dragged and dropped and it's found the first account number in my GL that it can find then we're not, we need to embellish this a little bit more with some more information. So we might want to know what that account number is or what the, what the name of it is. So I'm going to come over to my name and I'm just going to drag that into the cell right next to it. And once you do that, you'll see it's put another formula at the top and it's automatically gone and looked at my initial query and recognised that 1000 is my cash account for NatWest. Then we can click up the browser briefly. And what I can then do is run this now you'll see at the top as well because i've dragged those out it's put a fit command in there in my first row so this first row and this first column are command options so when i've run this it's going to automatically expand this column out to fit the longest field which is obviously quite useful we don't want it to get scrunched up like it is at the moment so i can just go and run that and i'll hit run it's going to go and look at my system and it's going to extract all of my accounts as you can see there's all of my gl chart of accounts my balance sheet and my PL. So we've made a start. Then we can go back to design. And we can then start to get some information out of this um, and, it, and start to put some filters in. So Jet's all about filters. So the more filters you put in, the more you can sort of hone in on the actual information that you want to get out. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to get an amount field in here, but I'm just going to put some dates in so we can start to tell Jet what date periods we're going to look at. So I'm just going to start. And again, with JET, you've got all your normal functionality with just Excel commands, etc. And I'm just going to do a little EO month formula. And just look at this cell. Let's just format this with the dates. And then I'm just going to do 
go to that last date and do a plus one to get the start of the next month. And I can drag this formula across and then I'll drag that for 12 months. And just expand this. Now you'll notice this is on manual, so it's not going to put that fit command in like it has when I've dragged and dropped, but that's fine. We can do just copy that. So this will automatically fit or we can highlight all of these columns and just expand them so they're even and jet will remember this so remember it will remember the formatting that you're doing as well we could put a total column on the end just merge that and then we'll just do a little formula here okay so we've got our date ranges so when i start to ask jet to get some amounts out for me. I'm going to use these date ranges to actually filter this a little bit more. So we're getting, getting data for a specific period. Now, because it's business central, it's going to want to look at a range. So I can then use my first jet command, which is going to be the NP function. And what I can then ask the system to do is do a date filter. So I can select the date filter and I can then select this first cell of my start date and then my end date as well. And what I will do then is just use the F4 I'm just going to anchor that on the column because I'm going to copy this across. And you'll see now it's put a date range for me. And I can just drag this across. And now I'm ready to go and look at that field to get all of the data for the first of the first to the 31st of the first, et cetera, et cetera, for each column. So I'll come into my first column here and I'm now going to use the NL function to start telling it what information I want to get. And I'm going to get a sum. And the table I'm going to use is my GL entry, which is where all of my transactions are. So I'm going to use that that field, that table, and I just want an amount. And then we've got these filters at the bottom. So these filters are now where I'm going to start to link these this cell into these dates and these codes, etc. So the first filter I need is a posting date. And because we've used the NP function, I can just link straight into that cell where my date range is. And again, I'm just going to use F4 on there because I'm going to drag this formula across once it's done. And the second filter is just going to be my GL account number. So I'll select that and I will link into that field here. So this is going to dynamically update as I refresh the report and I will anchor that just on the row. So once I've done that, it's then found an amount. And all I need to do then, because I've got these linked now to the date and the account number, is just drag that across. And you can see it's now found an amount for me in February. Then I'll just format this. So again, any formatting you do, Jet will remember. So you can make this a little bit nicer. And we want to put a subtotal at the bottom of this as well. So I'm just going to use the subtotal function, just standard auto sum. And because it's going to generate rows for me, I just need to leave a space and we'll just tidy this up. And I'll drag that across and into my full year total as well. I'll just format that. OK, and I could colour this or do whatever I need to do. Now, I don't want these dates to necessarily appear across the top. So what I actually want to do is just insert a Jan to December. So these commands, these filters, I'm going to hide them. So I'm going to use the first column here. I'm just going to put hide here. And now this is ready to run. So few minutes I've just created a generic layout there and I'm just going to come back up to jet and I'm just going to run this and what that will do it will use those filters that I've defined it will go away and calculate and it's going to do as you can see now it's going to expand these rows out and produce a trial balance for me so we'll just let that refresh and there we go so I've now got some numbers probably a bit too spaced out but that's fine we can just come back in and because we've hidden all those date fields, we don't necessarily have to have them that wide. So I'll just shrink this a little bit. So it looks a little bit neater. Now, there's some other commands I can do in here as well. So if I want to hide any rows that don't have a value, we can put a hide plus question mark command in there. And then we can do a very simple if statement. And we can highlight that all the way across. And we can just say, if there's anything with a zero, all the way across. We can hide or show it. So that's got an amount in one of those columns, so it's going to show it. And if we just run that again and running from the cache is slightly quicker 
it just means any invoices you've posted will not be picked up unless you do the full run process. But if you're just making amendments to a layout like I am, you can run it from the cache and it will run slightly quicker. So we'll just let that run. And there we go. So I've now got a much shorter report. It's hidden all the rows without zeros. And what I could then do is just say, well, actually, I just want a P&L. So I'm just going to come into my initial command or we drag that first number out, go into the NL function. and I'm just going to add an extra filter in here and just say. I only want to look at anything that is an income statement. And what you'll notice now, as soon as I do that extra filter, that first row is going to change. And it's now got and found my first P&L number and there's my P&L values and we can just run that again and we'll get a much more concise report. No balance sheet will be in there and it will just be. My income statement codes. So very, very simple to create a very, very quick trial balance style report. Now taking it a step further, um, we can do other things with Jet as well. So I've got a P&L my cost center here. So I'm using a dimension of my cost center and I've created a generic layout here. So this is more of a static report. So I've actually created a layout here and I've embedded some GL codes in here that I'm going to link directly to. So I'm actually linking with my filters. We've got my date range. We've got some GL codes here. That's a range. So you can use ranges in JET as well. You can use the pipe function and add another code if you want to. So it supports all of that. And I'm using a sheet split on this. So what I'm actually going to do when I run this one. I'll set it to run. I get an options page come up, so it asks me what do I want to look at? So I could actually select. There's my cost centers. I could select one or two or do a block. Various ways of filtering. We're going to do all of them for this and then I could select my region again. This is a dimension and I've got a project dimension so I can slice and dice this data to look at whatever dimension fields I want to use at. But this particular report is going to now split by cost center. So if I run it, it will go away. It's going to look at the filters and it's going to use the, the dimension is being used as the driver to split the sheets. So as you can see, it's now creating multiple sheets. And it's now created a sheet per department. So very, very simple to create a simple report layout like this and produce a departmental report or an expense report that you can then distribute out. Transactional based reporting can be used as well. So this is a transaction report with a few filters. So this is looking at all of my customers and I've put an options page in here so I can select which customers I look at. I'm looking at a particular range and I can look at a document type as well. So when I run this particular report, it kind of looks like this. So again, it's using the row functionality. It's going to generate rows of customers and then rows of transactions. So once I run. I can again select my customers as many or as few as I want to look at, and I can more importantly look at the document type. So if I want to look at an invoice, I could just select an invoice. If I want to look at an invoice and a credit memo, I could select both. I just want to look at some payments. So I'm just going to select payment, click OK and run. And because I've asked the report to generate rows, it's then going to go and generate rows of customers and underneath the customers, as you can see, there's my payments. For the subtotal, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six customers and their payments. So a very, very simple transactional based report. And also obviously that works for companies. So this is a company layout similar to the one that we've just looked at. And I've embedded a sheet split in this, so it's going to generate a sheet for a range of companies. And I've actually embedded the companies into the query. Just said I want to look at four companies, so I run this one. And this will do exactly what the last report did, where we looked at the dimension split, and this one will actually split by company. Obviously, the runtime will depend on how much data you've got in the system, how many companies you're trying to run this for. But generally, this is for different companies with different chart accounts. And as you can see, it's run reasonably quickly. And because of the way the report's set up, it doesn't matter. As you can see, if the chart of accounts is different, it will pull all of that data out. And I've got a very simple four company report that I could then save down, distribute. These reports can be scheduled as well. So there is a scheduler. You have a schedule option. 
and what that will enable you to do is schedule reports so you can actually give it a task name you can select a whole folder of reports you can run a single report you can generate it in a certain location and you can schedule it to recur once daily weekly monthly certain dates times and you can also email these as well so if you've got your outlook configured you can actually send this with a body and an attachment as well so very very useful functionality particularly if you've got larger reports that you might want to run um, at five o'clock in the morning so they come when you come into the office they're ready but you can set them to distribute out as well and there's also a jet hub as well so the jet hub enables you to upload reports so i could save this report down upload it into a hub the hub is a web link so you could access that on your phone uh, remotely log in and you can actually run it as well depending on your your access you can just run in select your date select your company select all of your filters yourself and run the reports so that's been jet um, very powerful tool and like i said it's very useful to run with both gp and business central um, so I've been Ben Rogers. Um, like I said, I'm a Dynamics 365 Business Central consultant, and I also work with GP and with Jet. Um, so if you need to contact us, um, please email hello at advantage.co.uk, and you can also find us at www.advantage.co.uk. 